Hi everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an all store procedure driven data tier for a C Sharp SQL Server Blazor project using my open source project datatier.net. You can get datatier.net from GitHub. Let me show you. It's my second most popular project. The address is just github.com slash data juggler slash data tier dot net. I'm going to be running the executable version of it, but you can, it's just a Visual Studio WinForms application. We're going to go ahead and just, uh, I'll just run this to show you briefly. There's nothing here. The only thing I did in this Blazor project was I took out the weather forecast data and the little counter and fetch data examples here. So in those pages. So from here, what I wanted to do though is get the data folder. I've already excluded the data folder from the project, but we're going to need it for our data tier. So I'm going to run data tier.net, the executable version. I'm going to create a new project. Let me make sure I don't already have it. I do. I've already done this video once. Sorry. I had to take one. Okay. So now we're going to create a new project. I'm going to call it small channels, which I am building a site for YouTube channels that are not exactly as popular as Joe Rogan. We'll just put it that way. And the project folder I'm going to paste in there. The UI folder is uh, not going to be, that's that's a future feature. It's a, it is a .NET 5 project and we want to create our data tier in the project folder. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Your data tier has been created and we're going to enable Blazor features and we're going to click on allow binding and that's so the little services will get created. Okay, now we're going to add a database. So we're, I'm going to type in my server name and I'm going to use Windows authentication and refresh my database list and select small channels. Hit save and hit save again. Okay, now if you wanted to, you can uncheck any tables or fields here before you build if you have any you don't want to include in your project, but I'm going to go ahead and include them all. And I'm going to go ahead and just click build all. And now the store procedures.sql and I'm going to just go ahead and execute this. And I'll just show you what this uh, looks like. The reason why it's getting those drops there is because I've already built this once. But basically this is for each table you get five store procedures. And now we're going to create two more. There's probably uh, two custom procedures and we're probably going to need some more for the before I get this deployed. But I just wanted to build two just to show you how to do it. First thing I want to do is I want to find all videos for a member. So I'm just going to click on create new method. It's going to be load by, which is returns a list, and it's going to be a single field. The parameter field is going to be the member ID. And then the order by, I want it to be a single field, and I want it to be the date created in descending order because I want the most recent videos first. And I'm going to hit next. This is just telling you the updates you're about to make to your project. So I ask your permission before I do it. Hit next. And now here's the store procedure that it created. You have the option to uh, copy this to your clipboard and go over to SQL Server Management Studio and execute this or I trust me with this anyway. And I'm going to click install procedure. So my store procedure has been installed. So now our SQL Server database has this one and I'm going to do one more and then we'll go over there. I want to find all the comments for a video. So we're going to go to comment, another load by, single field, it's going to be video ID. So all this is filled in for you, the method name and procedure name. If you want to change this, if your company has some naming schema for procedures or something, you're welcome to do it. And then order by type. Uh, this, I have a timestamp, so I also want to do the most recent first. Okay, and next. 
future versions might give the user some other ways to sort but for now and here we're going to do the same thing again confirm update here's the store procedure I'm just going to install it and we're done okay now we'll go back over here I'll refresh my store procedures list and here, here's ours I'll just show you one of them so this is where it finds this is the store procedure we just created um, I'm gonna hit control shift R to refresh my SQL server list that's why that um, I had just added the field member ID I'd forgot that's why I did a take two of this video so now we have our data tier created and built we're ready to start working with blazer so what I want to do first though is create our uh, system environment variable so the blazer project can work with it so to do that we're going to go over here and say just type in environment variable environment variables now I've already created this so I will just delete it and show you really quickly now I want to build my store my connection string this is something else you might like about datatier.net it comes with this program here all for the price of free this is called connection string fold builder and connection string builder is located in the tools folder of datatier.net so here I'm just going to type in my server name again type in my database name I'm going to use Windows authentication, build connection string, test and copy. Okay, it didn't like oh, that's ex, that's express. Sorry, it's going to that's going to time out here in about 30 seconds, so I'll get a drink. Sorry. That was my one oops moment for this video. I know. SQL express. Okay. Everything works instant when it works. All right, sorry about that, but that's the nature of the world. Okay, so now we have our connection string. Going back to our in, uh, environment variables. New environment variable. And make sure you're in the system. Don't put it in the user or else it won't work for you. So new environment variable. I'm going to call this small channels. And my variable value is going to be my connection string I just built and now in uh, your application and your data tier that we just built here's what we need to do we're going to create a solution folder add new solution folder called data that's why I, I see this I excluded the data from the project so that otherwise uh, it won't compile inside of this project or it just messes things up but put it in your own solution file and we're going to add four projects and this is going to be I've been here before is why it went right to this folder but I'm going to add the four projects that make up our data tier and I'll give you a brief tour of what we just built and then the object library okay so now we're gonna go ahead and build okay and we're gonna add our dependencies from our blazer project so we want to add a project reference to the data gateway and the object library and hit OK So that's all we're gonna need to do so in the gateway here's all your methods that this is all the store procedures I'm pretty good at lambda expressions by now after 10 years or so but to me it's still easier especially with some you know I've, I've worked in places where I had to kind of mentor some junior developers and it's a lot easier to explain to them gateway dot delete video and pass in an ID or and I'll show you some examples how to do that we'll just create an instance of the gateway but this is uh, all your methods that you call and it's just I don't know and notice all the methods are in alphabetical order I think my code generated code looks better than 90% of the world's code this is the same way I code and 
it, it uses you might like this program if you ever it's called regionizer it's also on my github repo but it's how i do a lot of this but this is all code generated like that so we have everything built the only thing i want to show you here is the object library here's each of your tables so for each table you get a data class and a business class the data class contains all your fields the private variables and the property with the getter and the setter for each of the fields also in alphabetical order not that it matters but it matters to me it's just easier to find stuff I know you have this thing here to find code but there's times where I'm just scrolling here and it's nice to see stuff like that a lot of people hate regions I know I'm the only one but I'm different in a lot of ways than the whole world and the business class is if you want to make any customizations so if you want to create any like this is how that store procedure we created it comes in here and it writes this and it writes this property so if you have any customizations to make or you know methods or uh, properties do it in the business class because this is going to get every time you build this will get overwritten and so you've always got the latest field set so that is part one of this video of how to build a data tier using blazor in part two i'm going to show you i'm going to come back and build a little bit more to the ui but i've got to walk my dog and get ready for work here in a little while but i just wanted to show you how to build a data tier and this is all you know i know it's hard to show a demo of it because there's there's no uh i don't have any code proof but it just to show you if i wanted to go to i'll give you the very quick demo I'm going to create an index.c sharp page because that's the way to let me add a uh, right there class and we're going to call this index.razor.c sharp so it gets added like that you have to make it a partial class because it comes because oops if I could spell partial okay because there's already an index page and now if you wanted to create we'll add a couple of references here using data gateway and using object library so let's say our table had some data in it if I wanted to get a list of videos uh, Oh, not it's just it's object library dot business objects. Sorry, videos equals gateway dot load. We have to create an instance of the gateway. Sorry, gateway equals new gateway. And this is my program regionizer. One thing I like about it, it has an auto commenter. So if I hit Control Shift right there, it'll type that comment for me. So that's another thing I like about that. So now we're going to say list uh, video gateway gateway I don't understand load videos okay now I don't understand a field initializer I'm confused. Okay, I need to be in a method here. Sorry, let's public void here. I'll even there. Our document's been format. This is the code behind for the gateway. And I'll add a method methods region alright here I'm gonna insert a method and I'm gonna just call this load videos make it a void and an easy way to get to void is just go to that and back change it to event and back okay and we're gonna add a method called load videos All right, here I'm going to say gateway, gateway, 
And now I'm going to say list. There. Okay. It just didn't like me doing whatever I was doing a second. So that's just an easy way to load. Now, I actually need to do some things like load the top 20 videos. Obviously, I don't want to load all the videos. And then I'm going to modify my Blazor video player to have a uh, embedded option for YouTube. I think I haven't built that part yet, but that was my video. So sorry to didn't have anything to show you as far as on the UI, but I wanted to just show you a quick video on how to build a data tier with data tier.net. And if you want to learn store procedures, I mean, that's, you know, if you, one thing I like about it is I've had people, they give me their database and I show them, you know, I'm able to build, I can build an entire project, especially in WinForms. I can build an entire WinForms project really quickly with this because it just does all the work for you. But it's also a good way to learn store procedures. So anyway, let me know what you think of datatier.net. If you've ever used Entity Framework, I think this is a lot easier. All right, have a great day.